great pretender. which compared the efficiency of locomotion for various species of things on the planet. In other words, they measured how much energy it took for a bird to get from point A to point B compared with the energy it took a fish to get the same distance and then go and a person and all sorts of other things. And they ranked them. And it turns out the condor won. Condor was the most efficient. And man came in with a rather unimpressive showing about a third of the way down the list. Somewhat disappointing. But someone there had the insight to test the efficiency of man riding a bicycle. And man riding a bicycle was twice as good as the condor, all the way off the end of the list. And what it really illustrated was man's ability as a tool maker to fashion a tool that can amplify an inherent ability that he has and really take care of a lot of drudgery to free people to do much more creative work. Hi, and welcome to episode four of Fahrenheit AI. Please like and subscribe. This episode is about pretending. Recently, the New York Times released an article about a generative AI model built to mimic a specific artist's work. It was a tailored AI model. Wand is the AI developer behind this model. The artist is David Sally. He's an American postmodern painter, printmaker, photographer, and stage designer. He built the model off of his works, and even though it had hiccups, it was much closer to the artist's style than what you might generate from stable diffusion. As a painter, you only have time to create a painting, but each painting contains within it all the paintings you don't have time to make. Sally said, AI is a great tool because it allows me to see thousands of combinations. Things that I would manually sift through in years are made with 5,000 versions in an hour. For my project this episode, I worked on Blues at the Tavern. It's a benefit for the Music Makers Foundation. It's produced by the Ink Kitchen and Printing United and will take place in Atlanta at the Northside Tavern. I started an ideogram where I generated a bunch of blues-style fonts and artwork that was reminiscent of music posters and graphics that I thought would be useful in generating designs. After settling on about 60 different designs, I took one into Illustrator. Illustrator Beta has some really cool new toys. Retype is in its beta form. It's a tool that can help you see the text in a raster image. It will identify the font and give you font options to choose from. It will replace the text in the raster image with the font that you've chosen. So you can have editable font and you have a raster image that is AI generated in the tone of the original image that you fed it. You can use the retype tool to delete text out of a raster image. You can use it to discover new fonts, which is what I was using it for frequently. It will download and apply fonts from your font library and also the Adobe font library. I am Lord, a back to me. I am Lord. Now that all the text is editable, I'm taking it off of the artboard so that I can adjust it. I really like one of the fonts over the others. I can also look at the original raster image and see what the AI has generated. I like the stripe. In an interview, Zelda Williams stated, I am not an impartial voice in SAG's fight against AI. I've witnessed for years how many people want to train these models to recreate actors who cannot consent. 
Like Dad, this isn't theoretical, it is very, very real. While Tom Hanks acknowledged that an AI version of himself would not be able to produce the same performances as he does now, he wondered whether audiences would really mind. Without a doubt, people will be able to tell, but the question is, will they care? There are some people that won't care, that won't make that delineation. The recording you just listened to, and throughout the Pretender episode, is an overdub of my voice. It is AI-generated, and it's much easier to use than talking alone. And it sounds like me, sort of. In this episode, when I'm not using the overdub voice, I'm just talking. The pauses are a little more awkward. I don't always know what I'm going to say next, because it's not as easy to edit without using the AI. I wanted to know if you would notice the difference between my real voice and the AI-generated voice. I think it's pretty easy. Sometimes it's less obvious, though, so listen carefully. I decided to avoid Descript altogether, which means I didn't use a script. I didn't use a thesaurus. I didn't use Grammarly to help me edit things together. And I noticed that my conversation skills are a little bit more disjointed. The project overall was a lot harder to do, yet scripting without those tools seems like it would take forever. Ultimately, I wonder if AI will start to take over our lives because of its ease of use. Even with the things that we are concerned about, it makes workflow and interactions in these medias a lot more simple. Right now, I'm in Photoshop and I'm trying to use the AI generator to edit the stripes that I liked. I'm adding the musicians to the artwork at this point before I continue with the stripes because I'm not having much success and I want to see how they will interact with the background. I'm using Select Subject in Photoshop to isolate the individual musicians on the stage. I do think that Select Subject has grown a lot and is quite effective. It's not so great with things like hair, and if you do have multiple subjects in an image, you need to isolate each one to make the best selection. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burden down. Glory, glory, hallelujah, when I lay my burden down. No more sickness, no more sorrow. I've added in the text that we generated in Illustrator using the retype tool, and I'm placing it along with the musicians in the foreground so that I can go back and work more on generating a new background. Sometimes Photoshop AI generation will generate based on what it sees in your image, and it will match very closely. Other times, it will take you very literally at your words and make things like stripes. I'm not sure how to control that difference at this point or even if it is controllable, but sometimes it just takes multiple generations. Although I do like the stripes that it generated because it did bring them further into the halfway point, so I'm deciding to work with what it gave me. I have noticed if you make small selections and do a generation, it is really good at fixing things like mistakes or broken lines. I do occasionally still use images from stock image sites like this one that came from Adobe Stock. I don't pay for them anymore, I just use the ones out of my library, but it's still a useful tool to find something quickly. Ultimately, I decided to use the Blues at the Tavern font that we generated in Illustrator in a different artwork. I did use this design for a t-shirt option for this event. I used a service to make an AI headshot. It gave me 30 variations, but only one of them looked like me until I made it move. Ha 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 ha. Well, that was creepy.
For my next project, I wanted to make a DTF design. I used this Muddy Waters Blues reference art from an album, and I used the retype tool in Illustrator to identify the font in Muddy Waters Blues. This time, I actually scanned through all the font options to find the closest matching fonts to the specific letters. I was looking at things like the letter S and how the letters fit together. I wanted to make sure that certain elements were repeated and it looked the most like the Muddy Waters logo as possible. This is probably the most direct stealing that I did in the project, although I wonder if it would be considered an homage. Ultimately, I decided it was pretending. Suspicious! I never believe you had nobody else. See nobody in the house with you. Well, I can hear somebody walking around in the footsteps. Of... Yeah, I know you in there. After achieving an accurate match, I, I went through and changed the text to Shelton Powell Blues, and I readjusted the letters so they matched. Then I imported the images. Suspicious. And I arrived at the final DTF images. There were two different options for DTF. I also had a t-shirt for screen print that utilized generative AI in Photoshop by expanding the original photograph even wider. I used Illustrator Retype to take the Midnight Blue album into the Blues poster. I used Mid Journey and Image Blend to add a new face to a body. I used Neural Filter Colorize inside of Photoshop to colorize some of the black and white photographs, reference photos that I was supplied. And I wondered, what is the ethics behind all of this, especially when I look at the new AI tools inside of videography? Do you think that Steve Jobs anticipated having his voice generated through AI? Well, that's a tough question, but let me try to simplify it for you. You know how we make sure that fire is useful? Yeah, not the world that we know it.